What's up guys, Andrew Ben here and it's that time for another FAQ video. I've been sick the past week and as you can hear my nose is a little stuffed up. This is me attempting to breathe. Feels great, sounds great I'm sure. I'm, hopefully you guys enjoyed that sound. If you wanna ask me questions to get answered in the next FAQ video, just leave them in the comments below or on my Discord server, which is once again linked in the description below. Also, I wanna apologize in advance because Serena is playing Link's Awakening, the new Zelda game in the background, so you can probably hear her button mashing and maybe cursing under her breath over there. Right, Serena? Maybe. <laughs> okay, so before we get on to the first question, I just wanna give a big shout out to all my Patreon members as always their names are on the screen at this point in time if you are interested in becoming a patreon member that is also linked in the description below also i just want to say a huge thank you to anyone who checked out my solo ep i just released it yesterday on friday october 4th if you haven't checked it out yet go listen to it it's on my channel spotify itunes you know all the usual places where you would expect it to be it is definitely there Go listen to it if you haven't already. I really hope you guys like it. So with all that being said, let's get to the first question. Okay, the first question comes from Fleur on Discord and they ask, what is your opinion on Agile guitars outside of the 10 string? So I've had a few Agile guitars over the years. I think I've had a Fan Fret 8 string and then that weird Les Paul Fan Fret 6 string and then the 10 string. I think those are the only three I've had, but I've definitely tried more than that from my other friends and bandmates. Uh, the other guitarist in Galactic Pegasus, Cooper, has had an 8-string Agile that he's used for years and years and years. Um, so, I don't know, my overall consensus on Agile guitars is pretty much like you get what you pay for. I feel like the price that Agile guitars are is exactly what you should expect of that quality. They definitely are not amazing, but they're definitely not terrible. Um, I've heard of a lot of people that have had like weird quality control issues where they get it and it's completely messed up. But if you're in the US or North America, they also have a really great return policy, so you can just return it and get your money back. So it's kind of like if you're in North America, I would say they're pretty worth it for the price. Um, I would still recommend finding like a really good used guitar over a new Agile, personally. Like, you know, you can always find, a, I know it's kind of a meme, but a used Ibanez Prestige. Those are always good. And you know, they're around the same price as a brand new Agile. So I would recommend getting something like that over an Agile personally, but I don't have any hate necessarily. You know, they're, for what they are, they're pretty budget friendly. And uh, you know, you can get some interesting stuff from Agile that you can't get from any other company, at least within that price range. So yeah, they're, they're decent overall. Next question comes from Aaron Morgan. He says, hey Andrew, which blackouts are in your Justin Low 8 string? Hi from Central Wisconsin. Well, hello to you too, Aaron. I see you comment all the time on my channel. Thanks for the support, man. Um, so he's talking about my Ibanez RG852 here. My neon green boy. So I have this modded with Seymour Duncan blackouts. These are just the standard blackouts. I don't think there's anything special to them. Like, you know, they're not the Mick Thompson ones or the Jeff Loomis ones or whatever. I know uh, Seymour Duncan makes a few different variations. These are just the standard Seymour Duncan blackouts. They're active mount, active pickups, and uh, yeah, pretty simple. Soap bar, active mount pickups that look great and sound even better in my opinion. Um, I don't know what it is about these pickups and this guitar, but for some reason I really, really love how the blackouts sound in this guitar. It always sounds super, super chunky. And uh, yeah, it's not really a pickup that I would have necessarily gone with as my first choice. Normally, I usually go for passive pickups, but this is the guitar and pickups that Justin Lowe used, so it made sense to put them in this guitar, and uh, I've been happy ever since. Ah, rest in peace to my guitar collection. All right, next question comes from Early William. He says, hey dude, I enjoy watching your FAQs every now and then. It never feels like you were trying to be funny or giving a fake opinion on something you don't know much about. You were able to articulate things in a way that many YouTubers just can, and if you can't give an informed opinion on something, you just admit your lack of knowledge without shame. It always feels like a real conversation and unscripted. Keep chugging and give us core dudes representation in the YouTubers. So this one wasn't really a question, but I wanted to bring it up because it was very kind of you. Uh, this you know, brought a smile to my face when I read it, and I'm glad that you guys can kind of see that coming across in my videos. These definitely are not scripted, and uh, I'm certainly not afraid to admit when I don't know anything, because that happens quite often, you know, I'm not the most well-versed uh, in anything really, you know, I'm, I play guitar and I record and I mix and I try and do things as easily and efficiently as possible, whether that's the traditionally correct way or not, 
I don't really care about that. I just want it to sound good and I want it to be fun. That's all I really care about and I'm glad that you guys can see that coming across in my videos. So yeah, I'm just happy to see that and this comment really just, uh, you know, kind of made my day when I read that. So thank you so much, man. Next question comes from Jaren and they say, hey there, big boy. So uh, I saw the notification for your gear stream but never got to watch. How far have you gotten in it and have if you've completed the campaign, how do you feel about it? So they're referring to my Twitch channel, which I use very, very rarely, but I did a Gears 5 stream a couple weeks ago where I was just playing some online King of the Hill matches. Um, so if you're interested in following me on Twitch, I don't use it that often, but I mean, obviously, you can feel free to do that. It's going to be linked in the description below as well. Um, so I've been a big fan of Gears of War since the first one came out back when I was in high school. Um, I pretty much bought an Xbox 360 just to play Gears with my friends way back then. I think I was like 13 years old when it came out, which is crazy because that was like more than half my life ago, which is depressing to say out loud. Um, so I've been a huge fan of Gears forever. I've bought every single game. So with the newest one, I beat it like relatively quickly after it came out. And I was actually really happy with it. I thought that they did a great job. Um, I really liked the story personally, and they did change it a lot from any other Gears game, but I thought that that was really cool. You know, Gears has been pretty much the same since, you know, 14 years ago, so it was nice to see those changes. And uh, I don't know, it's, it's cool. And the story, you know, like, Gears of War stories has, has never been too crazy to me. Like, they're always good, but not, like, mind-blowing amazing or anything like that. But I don't know, I still really enjoyed this new one. And uh, yeah, I'm probably going to be playing that game a lot for the foreseeable future. I'm even trying to get Serena to play with me because you can actually play as Jack, who's this little robot guy, and Serena likes to follow me around and give me ammo and not have to aim and shoot at things. So if you have a girlfriend or a fiance or a wife or whatever that doesn't really usually play shooting games, maybe give them, uh, maybe make them try Gears of War because it's actually pretty fun. All right, next question comes from Meshuggah1987, and they ask, what tunings did you use on your new EP? So on my new EP, Bury the Hatchet, once again, go check that out if you haven't already. I used three different guitar tunings on the four songs. The first song, the title track, Bury the Hatchet, was played in drop E on an eight string guitar. And then the two next songs, Grasping at the Unseen and The Gate, are both in drop A on a seven string guitar. And then finally, Moo is in kind of a weird tuning. It's on a nine string guitar and it is in it's in like C sharp standard, so standard nine string tuning almost. So the low C sharp stays the same, but then the other eight strings are all dropped down a half step. I don't really know what to call this tuning, but it's how after the burial tunes their nine strings when they used them. So it's basically you leave the C sharp alone and then you tune the high eight strings down a half step to F standard. So I guess it's like F standard with a low C sharp, whatever you would call that. I don't know, you music theory nerds can tell me what that would be called. Next question comes from Quanto622 and they ask, did you enjoy Issue's new album? I have not listened to Issue's new album or any new music that came out yesterday because there was a lot of it. I know Spite released a new album and a few other bands that I've been excited to listen to. I just haven't had the time yet. I've been so wrapped up in doing everything for my solo EP and getting that ready for release yesterday that I didn't really get to check out any other band's new stuff. Uh, but with Issue's, I mean, I'll check it out, but I don't really have high hopes. Uh, no hate towards the band, but I have never listened to them, really. Um, I have lots of friends who obviously are super into them, and I've tried to listen to them many times, and I don't know, for some something about them just never really caught my attention. But I have heard that the new album is quite different, and it's actually more poppy than anything else, which sounds like it would not be my thing, but it's, I don't know, it's always interesting to check out those very divisive albums where half the people seem to love it and half the people seem to hate it and see where I lie. Maybe I'll like it more now that it's more poppy, I don't know. Like, I never really liked Bring Me the Horizon until their newest albums, which most people, well, not most people, but a lot of their older fans don't like at all because they're not metal anymore. But I really like that, so I don't know. I'll give Issues a try and see what I think. Next question comes from Eric Morton. Oh my god, I never can pronounce your last name right. Next question comes from Eric. I'm just going to say Eric. If music wasn't your main focus, what would you be doing instead? Also, what's your favorite vegetable? So Eric is a friend of mine. We've done a couple of videos together. Went to Nam with him and that's where we met. And we've hung out quite a few times ever since. So thank you for the question, Eric. And uh, he's asking about vegetables because he knows that I do not eat vegetables and I'm the most unhealthy person in the world. So thanks for that. Um, but as for your real question, what would I be doing if I wasn't doing music? Probably have started like a gaming channel since that's the other thing that I do a lot of. Um, other than music, like probably my biggest other pastime is 
playing video games. So I probably would have tried to figure out a way to make like a gaming channel or something like that, which in hindsight would probably technically be a lot better to do than music because it's probably a lot easier to get, uh, you know, more subscribers and more interaction using gaming because that's way more broadly appealing than, you know, this weird niche metal stuff. Um, but yeah, I don't know, I've, I've always thought about still starting up like a side gaming thing, which like I was saying earlier, you know, I have a Twitch stream where I've gamed on it like a few times, but for some reason, I think now that I'm doing music full time, I, that kind of almost seems less appealing to me because now that music is my job, I still need to have some kind of hobby outside of work, which I guess now is video games. So it's almost like I don't really want to start doing gaming channel, gaming Twitch, whatever, um, just because I want it to still be like a fun thing to do and not be another thing that's more work. But I don't know, maybe I'll, I'm still debating if I wanna give it a try or not. But yeah, that's probably what I would be doing is focusing on something to do with gaming instead of music if I had uh, no musical inclination. Next question comes from Jake R. Do you get comments anymore about your picking hand? So as you guys might, may or may not know, depending how new you are to the channel, I used to hold my pick in a pretty weird way like this where I used like three fingers and I got a lot of comments about it all the time of people complaining that I was doing it wrong. So then I switched it up to like the more traditional style like this, which apparently is still wrong. So I don't know what the proper way to hold a pick is. I don't really care. But I used to get this comment every single video someone would complain about it. Um, ever since I switched to the more traditional style of picking, I don't really get comments on my picking head that much anymore. It's very, very rare. Um, on the older videos where I pick like this, then yeah, I still get those comments every once in a while, but it's mostly not a comment I receive anymore ever since switching styles. All right, next question is from Cracking the Globe, and uh, they ask, does your lady watch all your videos? <laughs> no. <laughs> Good answer. Next question comes from Long Dong Mekong Schlong, <laughs> and they ask, do you stand up and wipe or sit down and wipe? I've, I've never really thought about that. I, I'm pretty sure I just stay sitting. I'm pretty sure. Do I like reenact it right now to like remember what I do? No, <laughs> no I'm, I'm pretty sure I sit down. Thank you for the very interesting question. That was actually the last question. So we're going to end on a low note with that. Uh, thank you guys so much for all the questions. As always, if you haven't subscribed already, go do that. Hit that subscribe button. It helps my channel a lot. Make sure more people watch my videos and all that good stuff. You guys already know this stuff. If you watch any YouTuber ever, they say all this stuff at the end of your video, of their video, that I'm about to say. But I'm going to say it anyway. So yeah, once again, check out all those links in the description below. Thank you guys so much to anyone who's checked out my EP. If you haven't already, please go do so. It would mean a lot to me. I worked really hard on it, and I think you guys will like it if you like anything else on my channel. That's pretty much all I have to say. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching. I look forward to reading your new questions and answering them more in an FAQ in the future. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you guys later. Yes, man! Yeah.